So we all know that hydration is important. It's important for everyone. Our survival depends on it. But what does hydration mean for us, for thyroid thrivers? Hydration is actually a really critical piece of how we can stay feeling thyroid healthy and keep our symptoms minimized. So that's what we're going to talk about today. This is a really important show. It's going to be a fun and juicy show. So stick around. Hello, thyroid drivers. Welcome back to another episode of Thyroid Healthy Bites, a weekly podcast dedicated to helping you live well and eat well so you can feel well. I'm Ginny Mahar, your host and the face behind the apron at hypothyroidchef.com. So there's this saying, you can live three weeks without food, three days without water, and three minutes without air. I mean, water is absolutely essential to our survival. And most of us know that drinking enough water is like foundational to your health. But what does it mean for thyroid thrivers? We're going to talk about why hydration is so important for us as thyroid thrivers. We're going to talk about the water you're drinking and making sure that it's optimized for thyroid health. And then we're also going to talk about water filtration. All right, let's dive in. So does drinking water help with hypothyroidism? Yes. The answer is a very hard yes. I mean, drinking water helps with pretty much everything for everyone. But like the thyroid, hydration really impacts multiple systems in the body. So you've got all these systems that depend on it, your heart, your brain, your kidneys, your bladder, your liver your digestion, your muscles, they all work better when they're well watered. The short answer to this question of, you know, does drinking water help with hypothyroidism is that you're going to feel better if you're hydrated. And the reason why is that there's several common thyroid symptoms that can be relieved by just drinking enough water. You know, I was a health coach in our thyroid 30 wellness challenge for so long and I saw this so many times where people would start tracking how much water they were drinking and they'd realize, wow, I'm really not drinking enough. And then they'd get inspired to drink more and they'd have some, you know, tools to help them do that. And, you know, they'd be paying attention to how many glasses are getting a day. And all of a sudden, all these symptoms would disappear. Um, so here's what can happen when you're hydrated in regards to your thyroid symptoms. So body temperature, we all know body temperature fluctuations, like your sensitivity to cold, especially can be higher when you're hypothyroid. So your body temperature is more regulated when you're hydrated, you'll have more energy, less fatigue. It can really reduce headaches. It can lower your risk of constipation, which is like a textbook hypothyroid symptom. It can improve your digestion, which is somewhat compromised. Your gut motility is slowed down when you are hypothyroid. So you need that water to keep your digestion flowing. How about our brain health and all that brain fog that we deal with? Well, water is going to help with that cognition and concentration and mental clarity. Also, a lot of us deal with dry, itchy skin, dry, itchy eyes, dry throat, hoarse voice. All of that is going to be less dry if we drink enough water. And of course, you know, not not drinking enough water, being dehydrated can really affect things like our mood. Your mood is going to be better if you're hydrated. You'll also have less muscle cramps and this one's really cool. You're going to have less food cravings, especially for sweets if you stay well hydrated. Uh, Mary Showman, who many of you know as a thyroid expert, also says that water is a weight loss powerhouse. And she wrote the book on weight loss for thyroid thrivers. So she says, when you are well hydrated, your metabolism increases, you burn fat more effectively, and you lose weight more easily. Researchers have shown that drinking two liters of water a day can increase your energy expenditure by around 96 calories a day. So that means you could lose almost a pound each month just by upping your water intake. So if you weren't already inspired to drink more water, you know, I know so many of us are struggling to shed those unwanted pounds. Why not just 
drink some more water, you'll feel better, you might even support your efforts to lose weight. But here's the thing, even if we already know all this, there's so many of us who still don't drink enough water. And again, I've seen this so many times working with thyroid thrivers. Many people don't realize they're not drinking enough water. Um, when you're dehydrated, you can feel really dizzy, woozy, tired, just grouchy, you know, just all around lousy. So one of the best indicators you can use to make sure that you are drinking enough water is the color of your pee. So basically, the darker yellow your pee is, the more dehydrated you are, the lighter yellow it is, the more hydrated you are. Now, there's other factors that can affect the color of your pee, including things like supplements, kidney issues, liver issues, infections, diabetes, but it is kind of like a textbook indicator of your hydration levels and of, you know, are you drinking enough water? Uh, according to the Cleveland Clinic, urine that falls in the pale yellow category signals that you are healthy and hydrated. Dark yellow urine can indicate the need for more water. And clear urine can actually be a sign that maybe you're drinking too much. So that's a possibility too. I don't think that's, you know, the case for the vast majority of us, but something to be aware of. Um, how much water should we drink? You know, there really is no one specific guideline to this, but, you know, of course, there's that rule of thumb we've all heard to drink eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day as a basic guideline. And then, of course, to, you know, up that intake, if you've got other factors going on, like maybe you have a very high activity level, you know, maybe you're pregnant, things like that. All of those things can factor into your personal hydration equation. But in general, you know, if you just pay attention and you're mindful about drinking water regularly and you keep aware of those signs of dehydration and how you feel, and then just like tweak how much you drink based on all those factors we talked about, you should be able to just stay hydrated and feel well and enjoy all the, the good health benefits that come with that and avoid a lot of those dehydration symptoms that mimic thyroid symptoms. So a few things you can do if you feel like you're maybe not getting enough water is you can use a pitcher, you can use a reusable water bottle, you know, some kind of container that helps you track and monitor how much water you're drinking throughout the day by ounces. Um, you can also use a water journal or a water tracker, just people use their Fitbits and different health apps, their Apple Watch and things like that to track their water intake, that can be helpful. You know, personally with stuff like this, I usually like just a little analog sheet where you can check off, like this is how many, every time I drink a glass of water, I make a check at the end of the week, I can see, wow, okay, you know, three of those days I did pretty good, but the other four are not so good. I really need to work on this. So tracking your water consumption is just a really great way to build that awareness while also, you know, motivating you to drink more water. So let's talk about water, which is the most important ingredient in your drinks and why it's so important to drink filtered water as thyroid thrivers. So the thing about tap water is that it can contain thyroid disrupting toxins like chlorine, fluoride, and heavy metals. It's that buildup of those thyroid disrupting toxins that can have an impact on how we feel and on our long term health and thyroid health. So we're going to talk about a few different, you know, primary like suspects here for what's in tap water that is problematic for the thyroid. And that's namely fluoride, chlorine and heavy metals. Now we'll start with heavy metals, those in particular are very problematic for the thyroid and they have been linked to not only decreased thyroid function, thyroid disease, thyroid cancer, but also an increase in thyroid antibodies. So just the simple act of filtering your water is going to help protect your thyroid from some of those heavy metals that can lead to an increase in those thyroid antibodies. So for those of us with Hashimoto's or Graves, that's going to help you. You know, you want those antibodies to stay low. Next, we'll talk about chlorine and fluoride. So these are, you know, surprisingly, some of the two most common toxins found in our drinking water 
and surprising in that they're added on purpose. So let's talk about fluoride. This is like a highly controversial topic. Fluoride is added to a lot of municipal water supplies. And the reason it's been added is based on this idea that fluoride supports dental health, but it also happens to be a very well-known thyroid suppressant. Um, you may not realize that fluoride was actually used historically to treat hyperthyroidism or an overactive thyroid. So hyperthyroid patients were given fluoride to suppress their thyroid function, to make their thyroids less active. Now, most of you are here and listening because you have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. You have an underactive thyroid that you have to take supplemental thyroid hormone for. So we don't wanna be drinking eight glasses of something that has this chemical that is a known thyroid suppressant. The other thyroid suppressant that is knowingly added to our municipal water supplies is chlorine. And chlorine is added for disinfection which is a good thing, right? And chlorine can be safe in very, very, very small quantities, but it's also true that it can interfere with the thyroid's uptake of iodine. And the thyroid needs to uptake iodine to produce thyroid hormone. And so drinking, you know, eight glasses of chlorinated water a day, showering in that and all of that can in turn really interfere with the thyroid's ability to produce thyroid hormone. So here's kind of, let's talk about why like chlorine and fluoride, what they sort of have in common with iodine and bear with me because we're going to nerd out for just a minute here. So chlorine, fluoride, and iodine are all found in the halogens group on the periodic table of elements. So they're chemically related and because they're chemically related, they can compete for that uptake by the thyroid which can block iodine. So if there's a lot of chlorine there and a lot of fluoride there, or you know, either or both, that can compete with iodine. Now, iodine is essential for thyroid function. The thyroid needs iodine in order to produce thyroid hormone. Not too little, not too much, but just enough. It needs that though. It's required for the thyroid to produce thyroid hormone. But when fluoride, and or chlorine are present, especially regularly and in significant quantities, they can block the thyroid's uptake of iodine and then thyroid function can be inhibited. So when it comes to something we're supposed to drink eight glasses of a day, those thyroid toxins can really add up. Now to complicate the chlorine and fluoride issue, most of the water filters that you buy at the store or like the ones you put in your fridge do not filter these toxins out. They filter a lot of things out. They often filter out like heavy metals and you know, you have to really look up your specific water filter to see exactly what it filters out. And I highly recommend you do that because when I did that, we had a filter on our fridge and we also had an under sink filter that was like built in when we um, redid our kitchen. And I learned, no, these, you know, they're filtering a lot of stuff out, but they're not filtering out chlorine or fluoride. I started looking into water filters and which of them do. So let's move to that. We'll talk about my two favorite water filters for thyroid thrivers. All right, so what I currently use is an AquaTrue reverse osmosis countertop system. And I like it a lot. This is the same system that's used by Dr. Isabella Wentz. Uh, it's used by Dr. Mark Hyman. You know, these are experts that I follow, admire, and learn from. And so I respect their recommendations. One interesting thing to know about using my AquaTrue is that I have seen on paper that it's helped me lower some previously high levels of contaminants in my body that were found in our tap water. So, and I've seen this in my lab results since using it. I've been using my AquaTrue reverse osmosis for probably about three years now. And what inspired me to like take the leap and make the investment in this system, which is, you know, a little bit spendy there. I want to say like in the 350 to $400 range, at least last time I checked. So, what inspired me to take that leap and make the investment was that I was working with a functional diagnostic nutritionist to look at 
my minerals and my heavy metals and all that stuff. And the way that we did that is through hair testing. We did hair tissue mineral analysis. And, you know, I was looking pretty good on a lot of my minerals and my heavy metals were, you know, in like healthy, normal or low ranges in many cases, except my barium was quite high. That was concerning, you know, barium, one of those things like it's given to us medicinally like we've heard all heard of like the barium enemas and stuff like that so like a lot of this stuff you know the devil is in the dosage but it can be toxic and we're when you're looking at water you're really looking at like this is something very powerful you can do for your lifelong health this is something you drink a lot of every day so if i'm getting a bunch of barium in our tap water our filtered tap water and I'm drinking that for years, decades of my life, and there is like a toxic result that can happen from having so much excess barium like I don't want to do that so that's what um, inspired me to finally take the leap and upgrade my water filtration finally. So I got my aqua true reverse osmosis countertop system I started using it and like six months and then maybe another year later. We did a couple more um, hair tissue mineral analysis and that test I could see my barium was going down, you know, with time. So it's now at like a normal level, which is great. So I really saw that on paper and that just sort of like was, you know, obviously I feel better drinking more filtered water, but it just I like seeing that proof in the pudding. Those lab results can be very validating now. There are some cons to reverse osmosis that we have to talk about. First of all, I paid, you know, I don't know, I want to say I got a coupon and paid like 350 for it. So can be a little bit um, hard to get into for some of us. It also requires electricity. So what happens if the power goes out or what if I want to take, you know, filtered water camping with us or something like that. So not a huge con, but you know, Maybe for some of us, we don't want to have to plug in our water filter. Um, the thing with reverse osmosis that they come under scrutiny for, and this is important, is that reverse osmosis filtration removes not only the bad stuff, but the good stuff. It really takes like everything out of the water. So it's just plain water. So some of the good stuff that gets removed is beneficial minerals. So we're talking about things like potassium or Um, calcium, you know, these are things, not only are these minerals like important for our body, they're actually important for our hydration. Like some of these minerals are actually what are considered electrolytes. And electrolytes are important for hydration because what they do is they get the water where it needs to go in our body. They get the water into the cells. They get the water into our brains. They get the water to our muscle tissues. They get the minerals there so that our bodies just work better Our, you know that's why you see so many electrolyte drinks for athletic performance, it helps our muscles work better to have enough of those minerals so that's the trouble with reverse osmosis systems, mainly is that they take everything out, including the good stuff. So that means that we have to get more of those minerals from things like supplements or the food we eat I started adding. Uh, like remineralization drops to the water and that has really helped. I also take electrolytes on a pretty regular basis. So I'll move on to my second favorite water filtration system that I really like. And this is a more, I think, accessible option and it's not reverse osmosis. So I really like the pure filter pitchers and filter dispensers from Epic Water Filters. Now, Epic is this really cool company. They're out of Boulder, Colorado. They have a lot of great products. I just really like them as a company, but their pure filter pitchers and filter dispensers stand out because they actually filter out fluoride and chlorine, which remember most of those commercially available filter pitchers do not filter out. It's filtering out all these other chemicals too, like all the usual suspects like lead and mercury and microplastics and PFOAs. They say that they filter out about 99.99% of tap water contaminants. 
So it is removing that chlorine and fluoride, those two known thyroid suppressants. Now, if you're currently in the market for a good water filter, the people at Epic Water Filters have offered me an additional 20% off coupon. So if you enter the code HYPOCHEF, that's H-Y-P-O-C-H-E-F, when you purchase your Epic Water Filter, you can get an additional 20% off, which is great. So um, I will put the link in the show notes for them if you're interested in, you know, just upping your water game and making sure that you're drinking thyroid healthy water. I mean, that's really what this comes down to is thyroid healthy water. So that's it on hydration for today. I hope this episode has taught you some things about why water is so important for thyroid patients, why filtering your water is so important for us and what water filter options there are out there. There's definitely more than one. Um, These were just two of my favorites, but I hope that those recommendations are helpful. Now, full disclosure, that code is an affiliate code. I am an Epic Water Filter affiliate. It doesn't mean you get charged anything extra or anything like that. It just is a great way to support my work. I do earn, I may earn a small commission from your purchase. It's just a win-win for both of us. You get a discount, I get a commission, and it's just a great way to support my work. So um, if you're in the market for a water filter, that's a great option. And yeah, I do also really like my AquaTrue reverse osmosis. But, you know, keep in mind that with reverse osmosis, you do have to somehow account for all those minerals that are removed from the reverse osmosis water. Because, you know, even that, like, it isn't just about, like, this is like thyroid healthy eating, right, guys? It isn't just about what we're avoiding. It's about what we're adding in. And we do need to consume some of those beneficial minerals uh, through our drinking water. So I hope this has helped. I hope this has been eye-opening, inspiring, and informative. Um, If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me, drop a comment. And if you've enjoyed the show, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave a review. It really helps so much. If you'd like to learn more about thyroid healthy diet and lifestyle, you can download my free Thyroid Thrivers Grocery Guide at hypothyroidchef.com slash grocery. All right, friend, thanks so much for sharing this time with me and for being here and for listening to or watching the show. And I'll see you next time.